Hey guys, here's a quick video about the citric acid cycle and some arrow pushing inside of it. So from glucose, we go through glycolysis and get pyruvate, and pyruvate needs to go to acetyl-CoA to go into the citric acid cycle. All right, and here are some of the common cofactors or other molecules that are involved in the citric acid cycle. The first one is thiamine, which is vitamin B1. Next one is NAD+. And the next one is FAD, and there's a quick mechanism about how it is protonated and turns into FADH2. All right, guys, so the first part of this reaction is going from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So the first part is when thiamine attacks the pyruvate, then carbon dioxide gets kicked off, and then the molecule attacks a lithoamide, forms a tetrahedral intermediate, the thiamine gets kicked back off, then coash, which is part of the CoA, part of acetyl-CoA, attacks the ketone, forms another tetrahedral intermediate, and gets the lipoamide gets kicked off, and we have acetyl-CoA. All right, but we can't leave that lipoamide in its current state. We need to take it back to its former state so that it can be used again. And this involves NAD+. So a base takes off one of the protons on the lipoamide, then the sulfur attacks the other sulfur, and that proton goes down and attacks the NAD+, and we form NADH and also the lipoamide again. All right, so the first step of the citric acid cycle is when we take the acetyl-CoA and we make an enol out of it. That enol then attacks oxaloacetate, and we're going to see oxaloacetate towards the end of the cycle again. Next, we're going to take water, and we're going to add water to the molecule. And then we're going to kick off coash again, so we can reuse it at the beginning of the cycle. Then that molecule that's formed is called citrate. So now we're going to take the citrate, and we're going to go through several intermediates. One of them being aconitate, which is a short-lived intermediate. And finally, we're going to end up with isocitrate, which is an isomer of citrate. All right, so the next step is fairly simple. We're going to have a base provided by the enzyme attack the alcohol group on the isocitrate, and that proton also attached to that carbon is going to attack an NAD+, not an FAD, sorry I made a mistake there. Those two are then going to go to NADH and also oxalosuccinate. So the next part, we're going to take that oxalosuccinate and we're going to kick off a carbon dioxide from it. The enzyme provides an Mg2+, which stabilizes this uh, reaction. So that oxalosuccinate is going to end up going to alpha-ketoglutarate. All right, so this next step with alpha-ketoglutarate can seem kind of long on paper, but really it's the exact same mechanism as we did to get from pyruvate to get to acetyl-CoA. So it's going to involve a thiamine, a lipoamide, NAD+, and coash. At the end of this reaction, we're going to end up with succinyl-CoA. The succinyl-CoA is then going to be attacked by a phosphate group, giving us a tetrahedral intermediate. The CoA is then going to be kicked off, giving us coash. The phosphate group is then going to be attacked by a GDP, giving us succinate, and also GTP. The next enzyme is going to take succinate and an FAD, kick off a proton from the succinate, giving us fumarate and FADH2. The next enzyme is going to take fumarate and add a water to it, giving us malate.
malate is going to be attacked by another enzyme, which is going to attack the alcohol group, kick off a proton, and, which is going to go to NAD+. And this is going to leave us with oxaloacetate, just like at the beginning, and NADH. And that's the entire cycle. So that's the citric acid cycle. Hopefully that this was pretty helpful for you, and it made sense. And hopefully this helps you in your studies. Thanks, guys.